Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Design Hat Talk Five, and uh, uh, thank you all for joining us on this Sunday afternoon. I know how it, uh, it can be so lazy sometimes, but thank you so much for coming here. And I would like to welcome a very special guest with us, uh, Payal Vithal Das. She is a U UX analyst um, in KP Cap Gemini. Uh, welcome, pa Payal. Yeah, hi all. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here, Siddhi. It's a very warm welcome. Okay. So, um, give me a moment. I'll uh, start right away. Uh, yes, yes, sure. No problem. This thing okay. is all yours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Siddhi. Thank you so much, Design Hut, for having me here. Uh, give me a moment. I'll just present my screen. Okay. Siddhi, please, could you confirm? Yes, uh, it's visible. The screen is visible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over to you. Hello, yeah. all. Uh, so, I'm Payal Vithal Das. I'm a UX analyst at Capgemini. And I work in the field of UX for the, uh, what do I say? It's It's been uh, three years that I'm working. And uh, yes. So let's let's just start. The magic of UX. So firstly, I would like to uh, ask you, all of you: What do you feel is UX des UX design, or what is what is UX design actually? So uh, user experience is how a person, the user, feels about interacting or experimenting or experiencing a product. A product is a good service or feature. It might be a physical product, like a video game, a controller, or a bag of potato chips, or a technology product, like an app, a website, or a smartwatch. OK? So um, think about it. And think about, like, uh, think about a ketchup bottle, OK? A bottle of ketchup. Historically, ketchup came in a glass bottle. The user had to hit the bottom of the glass to make the ketchup come out. Often, no ketchup or too much ketchup would come out of the bottle. Today, the ketchup bottle has been re redesigned into a plastic squeezable bottle. Okay? And this squeezable bottle makes it easier to use and allows the user to control how much ketchup comes out. So UX designers do just this, just this. UX designers need to think about every person who uses the product. This might, this might include people with disabilities or people with a very different life experience from your own. For example, one user might find an app with a lot of text easy to use. On the other hand, as a user with a visual impairment might want different features like sound, voice control, etc. Basically, it comes down to this. When people like a product, they use the product a lot and then recommend it to their friends. And more people using the product means better business for the company. Plus, when users have a good user experience with the product, they are more likely to have a positive opinion of the company that made it a win-win for the user and the business. So I feel this pretty much sums up what is UX design. Let's move on. So user experience is the brain plus heart put to work together. When we first meet someone, we might have a lot of assumptions about who they are. As we get to know them th through, we discover that our assumptions were not so accurate. Has, has this happened with you all? Just, just, just go back, go back to your experiences and think about it. This is true in UX design too. We might think 
we know a user and what they need but ux research reveals who they are and what they actually need allowing us to better empathize with the user so i would suggest a few key points that you keep in mind okay so the first one is ask a lot of questions as a ux designer you need you cannot make assumptions about the needs of your users instead do this ask your users directly about their needs and wants which your product design can address second one become more observant shift your focus to the whole user and not just the words they are using in interviews where the user is physically present or on a video recording watching a user interact with you or your product can provide physical clues that can affect your research outcomes okay so next one is be an active listener what i mean by being an active listener is it requires you to fully concentrate on understand and remember what is being said by the user you are interacting with request input it's important that the feedback you receive is objective and unbiased friends or colleagues often provide biased mostly positive feedback because they want to support or please you so i think that pretty much sums up that user experience is not just brain or it's not just a heart or it's not just what you feel or how a how a user feels about a product it's the brain and heart both of them put to work simultaneously or together maybe okay so moving on we have uh, we'll know about what the what are the basic features of a ux designer what is this uh, what is it on a base that you need to know what is the bare minimum that you need to know about being a use ux designer so uh these are a few like researching via framing prototyping creating information architecture communicating effectively and most most important is empathy okay so some typical responsibilities of ux designers are let's move to researching first ux designers use research to understand audiences and learn about their backgrounds demographics like age and location motivations pain points emotions and life goals there's a lot i mean a lot to learn about users and their preferences and ux designers want to discover as much as they can in order to perform the product's design the more you know about a product it's the more the more the better so the better you are at researching or you knowing about a product it helps it will help you in building a better product okay so next we have wireframing wireframes are designed to demonstrate the basic structure of a page to gain st gain support from key stakeholders people with a business interest in the final product so it is a main skeleton of your product for example you draw you draw a simple rectangle you fill, fill in uh, fill it it with a, a text box you fill it with an action button and there so you have this in mind that my screen will have a text input like enter an email address and then it will it will have a call to action button which is sign in so that is what which is done in wireframing you define the basic the basic skeleton and the basic functionalities of your design in wireframing moving on we also tend to create prototypes a prototype is an early model of a product that demonstrates functionality like a wireframe but a lot more advanced while a wireframe gives you a general idea of where things go and how the product will function a prototype illustrates a progression from one screen to the next 
it acts like a link between two screens. We can draw up prototypes on paper, create a physical prototype, or build a digital prototype. Creating the information architecture, which is the framework of a website, or how it's organized, categorized, and structured. For example, when you click the file menu on a word processing application, like Google Docs, you can expect certain options like new or print or to appear in the drop down menu. Or when you click on a company's home page, you expect to find a link to an about page. That structure is the website's information architecture. So have you experienced this? Let me know. Let me know this in the comments below. And please let me know if you have any questions. Finally, a UX design job, like many jobs, also requires a lot of communication. You really need to be good with, with your words, like meetings with colleagues, writing emails, creating proposals, or pitching clients. In short, UX designers should know how to research, wireframe, prototype, create information architecture, and communicate effectively. So here we end the features that are the must-haves of a UX designer. Moving on, this is a general design process or, that, or a general UX process that needs to be followed. See, design is dynamic and every, every different product needs or demands a different kind of a, a design approach. So a general process would include identifying the problems, then moving on to interact with people or moving on to interacting with your team, and then have a lot and lot of iterations. Let me tell you that we have a lot of iterations going through. So design is all about redoing, redoing, and then getting out, getting to the final objective or getting to the final product, but through iterations. So we have five major steps that we need to follow. First one being brainstorm. The first stage of the product development cycle is the brainstorm stage. When the team starts thinking of an idea for a product, your team might already know the user problem and you want to solve when you begin the product development of life cycle. If not, coming up with a list of user problems is a great place to start. The brainstorm session is also an ideal time to check out your product's competitors and identify if there are already similar products available in the market. You want your product to fill a gap in the market or solve a problem better than existing products. So this is what you sit and ideate and brainstorm with your team and uh, you know work on the different problems. Look out for problems uh, that you have relating to a specific idea. Look out for competitors if there are any and uh, try to study how they've brought their product to life. Next, we have the define phase. The second phase of the product development cycle brings together UX designers, researchers, program managers, and UX product leads to define the product. The goal is to figure out the specifications for the product by answering questions like, who is this product for? What will the product do? And what are the features need to be included in the product to make it successful? During the define stage, your team narrows the focus of your idea. One product can solve every user problem. Continuing the example for an app to help working parents and guardians, your idea should focus on helping parents and guardians find reliable childcare or manage their schedules, not both. Be specific. I would like to say be specific with your problem. You can't have everything in one, right? Your app can be a can't be an all-in-one or it, it, it can't be a multifunctional being. 
there should be a specific and one simple purpose behind your app or your product or your website. May it be buying your product, may it be visiting your product, whatever. So it, it should be it should be a specific kind of a goal that needs to be kept in mind. The team in this stage may pin down the focus of the idea, but a product lead will probably be the one to define the scope of the project. See, in a team, there are various uh, people from various levels. You have people from the managerial level, you have people from the lead level, leadership level, you have uh, people like analysts, you have people like senior designers, you have people like associate consultants, you have many people. So in a team, everything is rule specific. Okay. Next, after all, all of all of this defining part, there comes the third stage, which is design. The third stage of the product development cycle is design. This is when you, as a UX designer, really get to shine. At this stage, UX designers develop the ideas for the product. Generally, UX designers start by drawing wireframes, which are outlines or sketches of the product, then move on to creating prototypes, which are early models of a product, and then that convey its functionality. At this at this point in the life cycle, UX designers make sure to include all of the product specifications that were outlined in the defined stage. You might also check to ensure that each part of design fits together in an intuitive manner. For example, UX designers might check that screens of an app flow in a way that makes sense to the user. Moving on, we have the next phase, which is the text test phase. Your designs move into the test phase. Your UX designers work with engineers to develop functional prototypes that match the original designs, including details and features that fit the company's brand, like font or color choices. This also means writing the code and finalizing the overall structure of your product. First, the team tests the product internally to look for technical glitches and usability problems. This is often referred to as alpha testing. Then, product undergoes a test with stakeholders to make sure that the product is aligned with the company's vision, meets legal guidelines for accessibility, and follows government regulations for privacy. Finally, there's an external test with potential users. This is the time to figure out whether the product provides a good user experience, meaning it's unstable, equi usable, equitable, enjoyable, and useful. This is often referred to as beta text testing. Finally, you've arrived at the fifth and the final stage of the product. That's the launch, launch stage, when the product is released into the world. This might involve listing an app on the Google Play Store or Apple's App Play Store, making a website go live, or putting a physical product on store shelves. New users might find problems with the product's functionality or features to improve that don't, no one noticed. So after the launch stage, teams will often cycle back to the design and testing stages to start working on the next version of a digital product. So like I said, we have a lot and lot of iterations when the designs go through the test phase, through the launch phase, and uh, through the clients, and through our potential users. So when we've done all of these iterations, we've again it is it is a loop and it's it is a repetitive process that you that you test your designs, then you go back to the design stage and again you come back to the test stage and then again try to launch something. You try to launch patches, you try to launch some fixtures, and uh, that is how your design is. That is which is why I say design is dynamic. 
Moving on, we need to keep in mind the four C's of designing. Consistency, continuity, context, and complementary. So what does consistency mean? Consistency is following specific design guidelines and how every every design or every product or every brand has their specific guidelines their specific guidelines which we need to follow as designers and these guidelines help to maintain like a like an omni channel through all of the products you you must have heard about brand guidelines so brand guidelines include the colors the logos need to be how the logos need to be used how the colors need to be put what text needs to be used so this is what consistency means even if you're designing a product for a laptop say for a laptop uh, for a tablet or you you're designing a product for a desktop in such a design you need to keep in mind that your product doesn't look different on different uh, interfaces so it, it should follow a similar kind of fashion. The user does not need to feel out of the place when he arrives uh, to your product through mobile or he arrives to your product through your website. So this is how we need to maintain consistency, which, which will help the user uh, in improving the user's experience. And also, it would help in building trust. Also, users expect the design to feel familiar across platforms and products. Next, moving on to continuity, users can maintain their progress as they move on from one platform to another. As, for example, a user should be able to, uh, to start writing an email on a laptop, save it as a draft on the laptop, and then continue on mobile. Your interface or your design, the way you design your product should be in such a way that it maintains continuity through different interfaces. So may it be different uh, screens that the user is using. May a user can use your product through, if, if your design is responsive and it can be accessed uh, through, um, through a desktop, it can access from mobile as well. You need to keep this in mind that the user never needs to feel out of the place when he's using your website on a on a mobile. Okay, so they they should be they should be able to save and edit and uh, make certain changes to the to the function or to the uh, to the action that they're trying to do. Context when and how users prefer to interact with certain features on different platforms is context a user can be context specific when and how he decides that he needs mobile for his use he needs a, a laptop now and uh, that your design should be context specific and complementary is the design of each platform adds something new for the user right so you need uh, you need to think from a uh, from a screen perspective or from a inter uh, interface perspective when you're designing so you can have some features uh, on mobile which you're not having on desktop and some features that you're having on desktop you can't uh, you you don't necessarily have on mobile or maybe you're not giving access to all the features through mobile and uh, you asking them to use their browser or you are asking the user to download your app or something like that. So one example which I would uh, like to give you is uh, about Microsoft Teams. Most of us are using Teams these days and uh, one of their feature is uh, changing the background. So we don't have this change background kind of feature in the desktop version or the web version or the browser version. We have this feature only if we download the web app on your desktop. Only then you can change your background in Teams. So such are the different kind of features that uh, you can aid your user with. Okay.
please please feel free to drop in questions and in in your in the comments so that i could i could take up as i move so next we move hi pal to... we already have some questions okay am i audible yeah yeah yes uh, one yeah uh, should we take the questions at the end or should we uh, take it as we go along um yeah uh, maybe we can we can take it at the end uh, we, we have uh, we have time till 2:45 uh, 2:45 right 2:45 3 yes yeah okay so uh, i'll complete my presentation up to 2:45 quickly wrap up and then maybe we can have 15 minutes question questions yes that will that will be good yeah yeah okay okay so moving on we have uh, we need to i mean uh, as a designer you need to empathize with the user when you empathize with someone you share their mental and emotional experiences and are able to understand their thoughts in a particular situation okay so ux design is not about solving problems it's not just about solving problems we assume users want to be solved every one of us as a human being or as a person are are built with these preconceived notions that maybe there is a problem maybe i assume this is a problem and these assumptions are something which will kill us we don't need to go with assumptions we we should not assume what the assumptions are or maybe this is what i feel the user needs to be solved it's about solving problems that users actually want to want to solve as people we have this one thing in common we never show what we want or we always mean different things uh, by the way we show by our actions we mean different things uh, when we speak so there are a, there are multiple um, what do you say multiple facets faces for a single single thought so you need to actually you need to actually know what users actually want to be solved it can be different they they won't show it in a way and it should be there it is different always so you need to actually understand that what, this is how they may feel maybe a user is raising eyebrows maybe uh, when he raises eyebrows he feels that oh my oh my god this is confusing and maybe raising eyebrows to you may uh, may feel that uh, maybe he is uh, confused uh, maybe he is uh, angry or he can't figure something out so it is different so you you need to actually understand what the users try to feel we need to follow an empathy map an empathy map is an easily understood chart that explains everything designers have learnt about a type of a user so you have to be your designs should be user centered which is why you are known as a user experience design designer so your designs should be user centered centered and user focused okay you should understand you need to understand what the user says what the user thinks how the user feels and what the user actually does maybe uh are you how a user feels is how do you feel when you placed an order is a question you could ask and you could get uh for example you placing an uh, order for an online um, online what do you say an online food ordering app and uh, you we, if you want to know how the user feels you you need to ask open ended questions please keep in mind that never put your questions um in a kind of a directing manner if you put direct questions or uh, questions which are in a directive manner you want the actual answers so uh, keep in mind to ask them open ended questions like how did you feel when you place an order when you place an order on the app so it it is how you can get through empathizing with the user and empathizing in something you need which you develop over over you uh, like you're learning researching about the user and knowing more about the user by knowing more by talking to the user you kind of you know like get a hack of the user and you can maybe predict what he thinks or how he feels so this this comes with practice and uh, for 
this you can have regular practices you can have interviews and you can have so many things so accordingly we can uh, we, we should learn to empathize with the user this is something that everything feels everyone feels all of the designers may feel i don't know about you but at least i felt this at some point of my life it is known as the imposter syndrome the belief that you are unskilled you are inferior to others or bad at your job despite your success the sim some of the few symptoms of an imposter syndrome include lack of self confidence feeling like a fraud constant comparison to other people self doubt not trusting your intuition and capabilities negative self talk irrational fears of the future and what not this is something we really really need to avoid and something that you can do to avoid this is uh, acknowledge the thoughts own your accomplishments make a list make a to do list have a conversation and realize that you are not alone you are not alone you are not the alone alone person that is beginning from from the start from scratch there are many many like you you should you, you need to understand that there are many like you and you're not alone okay so everybody's i feel everybody has got something unique that they can bring to the table and value that they can add every designer or uh, or every person for that matter has something unique in them which which is which helps them which helps the product to have a different perspective okay as we as we look at a product so every thought of of every person has a different different kind of a view to the product which is how we develop uh the most the most of the features or changes in a product okay and this is something i really believe in is everyone started off in the beginning everyone was a no one in the beginning and now they've become someone through their hard work and through through their talent and through practice so it is okay to feel that that i can't do and uh, you know just don't demean yourself and don't feel like you know you are the only one feeling this and it won't help so so it, it is that everyone needs everyone some day had a day one and they started off from the in the beginning okay so as we come to the end i would like to recommend a few resources that you could go through uh learning more about ux design as ux is a very vast topic and can't be covered in an hour of a talk but this is what i could present to you you can uh, access courses provided by the interaction design foundation you can access courses on coursera you can access adobe xd ideas uh, also reading would help a lot uh, try and read on uh, try and read follow ux collective on medium books and uh, something which is i would like to tell you we we learn from our community our own community that is what helps us it it helps us grow as a person and uh, as a designer so about i would like to tell you a bit i have published a few articles on medium and tell to tell you the research that i was gone through and uh, the the process that i followed was was a lengthy one so i feel you should go, go go through every all of these ideas and as you as design in all is a is a dynamic field and a changing and a emerging field you need to continuously be on toes so yes this is all from me that's that was my time thank you so much so any questions we could have it now siddhi hi bye yes yes uh, yeah. we have some um, okay Neeti Gehlot asks, "How long should the research pro process be?" Okay, how long? Uh, what does she say? Research uh, process should be. Okay, the research process. Yes. Okay. Mm. 
research process is iterative okay so in every step when you uh, when when you make a design change or you looking for a new feature you need to research right you need to ask people about it you need to read about it so research process goes through all of the all of the design processes so it it's nothing that you you you've done your research and then you've stopped you 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 are not researching no it doesn't work like that you have to continuously research so that you find new features and something like that so yeah you need to continuously research thank you so much i think uh, you mentioned a very important point that is to be iterative about the process because, right, right, uh, right how important that is because it's not like that you found one solution and that is right uh, you right. have to keep evolving it's right um, the next question we have is from virat sahani he's saying how to choose the right ideas during brainstorming session okay how to choose the right ideas during a brainstorming session okay so as designers i feel we we get a lot lot of ideas you know a lot of ideas that we could have done it in this way or that way or this could be an approach or something like that but to choose the right ideas i would say is be, uh, based on purely based on research and purely what you want to give in as a product right you can have innovative uh, features or you can have uh, out of the box features but when you give up a feature or you uh, land a new feature uh, you need to be sure that um, it you know uh, it is binding to all the guidelines and uh, what you're looking for and everything like that okay so it is not from um, a singular idea that you need to follow point 1 point 2 you need to be aligned with what your design problem is or what your problem is so according to the idea according to the problem you need to brainstorm your ideas and which would help thank you so much uh yes. virasani also asked how do you set brand guidelines guidelines okay brand guidelines so if if you're working on a client project or uh, if you have a client maybe clients have some clients have their predefined guidelines uh, defined by other designers who have designed their brands may uh, some people have their guidelines or some people don't have so when if they don't have you need to create a guideline of your own you need to create a design system of your own like i will be using text boxes of this height this width and you need to you know you need to write document everything and when you document all of these things like what shadow um what is the opacity what would be the font size where am where am i going to use this kind of a font a heading a heading font a body text or what would be the size all of these uh, this is included in brand guidelines right and we need to document a fo separate folder or have a separate brand gu branding guideline document with you if not provided with the client and set it to your design which is why which is what you know creates that continuity in your design and so something which is what i go through it pretty much yeah i think you can size it pretty well uh, yeah. we have this last question from sahib anand okay <clears throat> he says how to improve the process of empathizing process of empathizing is also iterative i would say and and it is a learning curve every time you the more people you talk to the more you understand the more different stories you listen to the more you will you know you'll try to gain that experience and something which i would like to state is um approach a user with a clear and neutral mind okay don't have any judgments that yes i have whatever so don't have something of that sort have, go with a neutral and fresh mind and gain that experience and then try to you know build on that or uh, learn from that so empathizing won't end in a day or two you need to learn it over oh it comes over a period of time and you'll you'll understand it's pretty much simple not difficult that is nice i think uh, nothing can be a better experience than uh, experiencing with time itself Right, and right. uh so yeah i think uh, we're done with the questions uh, right now and before we end i would lo love to you know uh 
uh, I would love to know if you have something to say at the end, some advice to give to our viewers, listeners. Okay. Uh, so uh, something that I would like to say is, you know, be keep the child in your life, and try and keep on questioning, questioning every everything, which is how you learn. and uh, that would really help in your designs and it would really help you to grow as a person be uh, be someone who can feel how people people feel and put yourself in their shoes and try to experience some what they're going through and this will really help you you know learn uh, learn something about psychology about how human psychology works and learn from that and uh, that would also help in designing better experiences i i suggest thank you so much pile uh, i think that is a very nice advice keep the child alive in you and i uh, thank you so much overall because we, i got to learn a lot today uh, about ux design and i loved how you touched on uh, unspoken topics like imposter syndrome right. and things right uh anyways i think uh, with this we come to an end uh, of our design hat talk 5 uh we'll be sharing the links of um, tiles uh, uh social medias in the description below so you can follow her you can message her you can reach out to her yes. thank you so much pile for coming here joining us and giving us your time and knowledge yes thank you so much it was such a great experience for me as well and yes you can connect with me anytime so yes yes let's be connected yeah so yes yes thank you so